Hello, this is Christy. I am going to continue my series of tutorials on Zara Designer Pro and today we will look at the transparency tool. You can find this tool on the left toolbar down here. It looks like a glass and it is applied to any object. It's called transparency tool. You can activate it with the F6 key. So let me demonstrate how this tool works. And to help with that, I'm going to import a photo into my Zara document here. And you can see this photo is a simple photo with no effects applied to it. So the very first thing is if you select this photo and click on the transparency tool, you can see, as always, the top bar for that tool changes to show you options. So the very first option you can do is apply a plain transparency to this object, which means it's going to make the object more transparent in a constant way across the entire surface of the object. The transparency will be applied. So you can, of course, use one of these presets, but we will look at them in a second. But by default, it will apply a flat transparency. So you can either select flat and you can notice this slider has jumped to the half. So if I set to no transparency and pull this slider, that achieves the same thing. It applies a flat transparency to my object. To better see the effect, I'm going to import another photo. So this is my object and this is my original photo, which is now behind this other object. And to see the transparency in action, I'm going to select the object in front and again click transparency and pull the slider up. You notice how the back object becomes visible through the front object. If I put the transparency all the way to 100%, of course, the front object disappears completely. So um, it doesn't actually disappear. You just don't see it anymore. It's still there and I can still see the handles of the object and modify its dimension. The second type of transparency you can apply is, of course, the linear transparency. And from this point onwards, all of the transparency types are almost exactly like the fill types. So you get linear, which applies a transparency that you can control or you can drag a line across the object so that your transparency goes in a sort of a slanted way and it's less in one point and more in the other point. So I'm going to illustrate this with a flat rectangle like this, which is black. And if I apply a linear transparency to it, again, you, you don't have to actually select from the drop down. All you have to do is just if you if you want a flat, a flat transparency, you slide the slider. But if you want a linear transparency, just click and drag on the object. So you notice that it automatically creates a linear transparency. So you have a starting point and you have an ending point. So now this slider controls the transparency on each point. If I want the starting transparency to be not zero, I click on the starting point and change the slider. So you can see the transparency doesn't start from full black anymore. It starts from a little bit of transparency. So then if I want the end point to not be completely transparent, click on the end point and drag the slider from 100 down. So like this. So you can see now, of course, you can move these around. You can change the direction or the um, contrast of your transparency. Just like the fill tool, and you can control the way that the transparency curve is applied. So if you click on this arrow here, profile, it's called, then you bring up this profile window and watch what happens. On the first slider, you can define the ratio of start to finish, start to end transparency. If I make the starting point zero and the ending point 100 so that we can notice the contrast better, then 
you notice how if I pull this first slider of the profile to the left, it gives me way more black than the transparency part. If I move it to the right, I only get a little bit of black and then the, the transparency completely falls off to zero shortly after that. So that's what you control here. And the second slider controls how steep the curve is. So if I pull it all the way down here, you notice the transition is far, far more sudden to even the point of it becomes a simple black to white to a, a more faded one. And then I get sort of the very dark in the corner, very transparent to the corner, the opposite corner. But then the most of the object remains on a 50%. So you can see that curve shows you how the transparency will fall off. Okay, so with the, the bottom slider, you, you change the, tr the contrast between the two values and then the top slider moves the point of inflection to the start or the beginning. So that's how you do it. Okay, different other types of transparencies, just quickly circular, gives you a circular transparency and then it uh, allows you to make some like a glowing, uh, glowy objects. If I turn my object into white, you can see I can create sort of like a like a glow like this. Again, the same thing applies here. The profile controls how your curve is applied and the contrast and the size. So, you know, I've quickly added a bit of a glow to my object here with the transparency tool. Another way to do transparency is by selecting elliptical. Of course, you then get two points to change the shape of your transparency. And of course, every point can change. You can change the values for the inside and the outside. And another one is conical, which gives you sort of a conical starting and then opposite end point. You have a diamond with like four corners. You have three point. So this controls transparency in three points like this. So if I want that corner to be all the way down and then this starting point to be maybe in the middle and then this other one sort of in the between. So then you have three different values. If you scale these down all the way, you can see that your transparency actually creates a pattern and this is controlled by the repeating drop down up here, the tiling if you want. So you can have repeating transparency or simple, which doesn't repeat. So it just creates a massive big object shape. Then you have four point again, the same thing. You control it in four points. And if you do a repeating one and you scale it down, you have a repeating pattern like this. And finally, you have the bitmap and fractal cloud. So bitmap actually can use a bitmap as a transparency shape. So for example, I have selected bitmap here. I'm going to use sort of that value there. And in the bitmap, it uses the default bitmap, but then you can change your bitmap to be this glass. So you notice now that my transparency actually has the glass repeating. So the dark areas of my glass are more transparent. The lighter areas are less transparent. So I suppose this is a, you could do an effect with this, with some photographs by superimposing photographs to look like they've been double exposed or something. And then finally, you've got these fractal clouds and the fractal plasma, which is just a weird shape I never use. I don't know why they put it in here. Maybe it helps you to create some sort of textures um, on your objects that look a little bit more organic. So there you have it. This is the transparency tool. It's quite flexible and I have used it a lot over the years to create various effects and kind of make objects fade into each other and all that stuff. So. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you enjoy my tutorials, stay tuned for next ones. I will be going through all of the tools in Zara Designer Pro and we have quite a few left uh, down here in these menus. Feel free to subscribe to my channel, like and share this video with others and see you next time.